It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. We'll teach you how to shoot. We'll teach you how to light. Teach you how to mic and edit right. Each second Saturday, there's a free training. From programs on display to focusing and framing. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. You're watching TCTV. It's the Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. Second Saturdays at 12 o'clock in Studio A. Yeah, it might go a little bit longer, uh, just for just depending on the question period, how how questioning you are. Ready when you are. Okay. A one and a two and a three. Okay. Welcome to the TCTV training show. I am Dan Bennett, your host and moderator and instructor for the show, and uh, I want to welcome everyone here to TCTV and uh, say hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, so today's show is about GarageBand. I'm not going to be covering everything in GarageBand. I'm going to attempt to create a song and teach you how to use the program in the process for the most part. The idea is that you'll be able to look at GarageBand and have a sense of what it does and how it works and be able to manage it uh, possibly with a little help. Uh, all of the cows are computers on wheels uh, that are used for editing. Uh, GarageBand is on the cows. Uh, GarageBand is also on all of our laptops that we check out for members that want to do editing at home. So, uh, uh, as my uh, initial screen here says, it is a music authoring program. Now, when members uh, do programs, they often want to have music. And uh, one of the worst things to do is to find copyrighted music and use it on your show without any kind of permission from whoever the author is. Um, there are a number of... Uh, um, ways and means of getting music that uh, have copyright permissions that you can use on the channel. Uh, but their style and length and uh, um, genre, or genre, genre, uh, they might not be what you're looking for. Uh, a lot of the music that we offer, that we paid for, and that we have on the computers that you can use readily and freely uh, are what I would call industrial. And these are typical instruments, and they're kind of poppy, kind of sounding music. But what if you want something with a dance beat? What if you want uh, ambient music? What if you want something really jazzy or something very, very orchestra, oh, orchestral, <laughs> orchestral? <laughs> Uh, GarageBand uh, is also a MIDI device, meaning that you can plug in a guitar or a keyboard or a microphone if you have a, a regular drum kit, and you can record that music live and that in, uh, incorporate that into the program and then mix it and cut it up and add effects and do all kinds of fun things with it. Uh, for my particular purposes, uh, I want to teach you how to create music without having any musical instruction whatsoever. Uh, uh, talent, I don't know, maybe a little bit, that would probably be helpful, but skills nonetheless. And I'll show you how I do it and how I've been doing it for years and years. And uh, I've been authoring my own music of various kinds for a very long time and I absolutely love it. And I took one quarter of musical training in school, in, in college. And it was all the basics, but uh, I didn't learn how to play guitar or, or uh, piano or anything like that. I took instruction in both of those when I was a kid, but I uh, soon lost interest to do other things. So uh, 
let's, uh, let's, uh, let's just jump right into this. So, we will find our garage band and uh, I will turn it on right here and as you can see there are a number of elements in the program and uh, <clears throat> instead of walking through the opening up process which is uh, fairly straightforward and uh, when we add an instrument here a little bit later uh, you'll see it kind of goes through the same process. So you see my mouse over here I am looking at an instrument right here and uh, uh, that is a keyboard. That is one of the virtual instruments that I've selected. Down here you'll see a whole big old list of tons and tons of different kinds of instruments. Over here on the left we have a particular kind of instrument and then uh, a particular kind of synthesizer and then uh, an even more particular kind of sound of that particular synthesizer. Uh, let's see, let me, let me go up here, Ooh, come on, and we'll go there. So, we'll start from the beginning. Make original music using virtual instruments and effects. So, for those of you who don't know uh, what a virtual instrument is, uh, it is a program, essentially, uh, within the program that generates a particular kind of sound. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we will go to virtual instrument choice. And so what we'll do is we'll select uh, some kind of instrument and uh, we'll play it and do a little bit of editing and I'll discuss the keyboard and musical typing and the difference uh, that that is. Uh, so I jump out of there and uh, go here. Okay, so we have a bunch of musical instruments and uh, uh, right here I've got synthesizer. And so the instrument that I've selected is up over here in this column and uh, I have a number of different things that the instrument, uh, a number of things that I can use to change uh, uh, whether or not I can hear uh, the instrument or not hear it. Uh, this little item here, I can adjust the volume right there. Uh, this little knob is me being able to pan left or right. Uh, let's say you have two different instruments. You can have one pan right and one pan left. So you hear the guitar on this side of the headphones and you hear the keyboard on this side of the headphones so you have these adjustments and there's more adjustments that you can make and I'll get into that a little bit later. To the right of it I have our timeline. This whole area is the main timeline and all the instruments uh, available go up and down this column. Below this area right here this is the editor. This is the musical editor and this little green screen right here um, shows kind of the general overview of the notes and this one down here gives you the exact notes that you're, that you're doing. This particular note, right there, by clicking on it, right? This is the note of C, and this area represents a keyboard that is along here. And so if I hit the C4, I get the identical note. So <clears throat> I can use the keyboard to get a sense of what note uh, would be playing as the uh, playhead, this little uh, unit right here, as it moves along it gives me a sense of what notes I might get if I uh, uh, scroll up and down. The keyboard uh, is really useful for recording and we'll do a little bit of recording uh, in a little bit. So. I have this particular instrument. So um, this yellow, uh, this yellow uh, line here is the looper. Uh, it's not the looper, it's uh, the cycler, as it's called. I call it the looper because when you hit the space bar,
uh, it goes through and then it jumps back at the beginning. And these are random notes that I've uh, made that I thought sounded really nice just to get started over here. And I can uh, stop it at any point. So this gives me a sense of uh, kind of the overview. And uh, let's say that I wanted to create more notes. Uh, when, when I move the mouse over to this area, I get this uh, little symbol. And if I click and drag, what I get is a copy of this area right here. It's a copy. And notice how these little lines are ghosted. Uh, so if I extend the cycler, if I play this, it will play through the notes that I've created. And it keeps going and going, and then it just repeats. The idea is that you can create uh, a short little piece of music and uh, essentially make a limitless number of copies because I can just keep going and going and going and going and it just uh, makes uh, more of the same notes. So you can create a short little piece and without doing any more work, you can just extend it. On the other hand, if I want to create more original notes, uh, I uh, move the mouse on the inside of the green box and I extend the size of my uh, music making area. Okay, so I've got that and I've set the volume where I like it and uh, I've got these little things here. So uh, this little piece, as you can see, says mute. If I have a whole bunch of instruments and I want to isolate one particular instrument, uh, I can selectively mute this one and, and several others and listen only, only to one. Or I can use the headphones and that mutes everything but this particular track, this particular instrument. <clears throat> so let's pretend for a moment that I don't like that particular sound of this particular thing. So what I do is I will click on Massive Saws. And you'll notice that the little instrument has changed. It's a different... Uh, a different virtual instrument, and when I play... So I get a different sound, and I've decided, well, I want something else. I don't like that sound, I, I like the other one. Okay. Now, instead of a synthesizer, let's say I'm going for something a little bit more classic. I want something orchestral. And I love the sound of harps. So we will turn it into a harp. So I can make harp music, because I think it's uh, uh, just a lovely sound. Yeah, that's really nice. Or how about a pipe organ? in a cathedral. There we go. Now you'll notice, depending on the virtual instrument, it, it may sound really nice as a particular synthesizer, but it doesn't sound so good as a guitar or piano or a jazz organ or, or something else. And so a lot of times when I'm creating music, I will swap out instruments. I will uh, try this instrument, try that instrument, because, you know, I like the notes, uh, but the way the notes are coming out as music, I'm, I'm not feeling it. Um, in our instrument list, we have Legacy. And uh, GarageBand has had a series of evolutions uh, over the past few years. Originally, when you bought a Mac, GarageBand came with the suite of programs that were uh, built into, to, into the, anyone who bought a Mac got GarageBand with it. And the, uh, the interface looked a little bit different and, and uh, the instrument list was over here and uh, uh, other things were over there. And so what they've done is they've moved things around uh, in the interface, but it still essentially functions the same as it has 10 years ago. But now, uh, you pay $5 for the program. 
It doesn't come with your Mac. If you buy a Mac, you have to pay an extra five bucks. And if you want loops, and I'll talk about loops in a little bit, you pay another five bucks. So, uh, so let's go back to our synthesizer. I really like that uh, sound, and if I can find it again. Uh, oh, let's try the pad. Oh, look at all these. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Oh, I think that's my favorite right there. So I really like uh, the music, and I want to add a few more notes. Now, <clears throat> right over here, uh, I've got a piano. And depending on what key I click on, uh, uh, determines what kind of sound comes through. But I may uh, be a little bit musically inclined, and you see these two little buttons right here, I can have musical typing. So, so I can click on these different keys and get different notes. Oops, I'm recording something accidentally. Um, <clears throat> So I can do uh, this way or the other, and depending on what you're inclined to do. What I also did inadvertently is I turned on the, the note section. You, there are two different ways of displaying uh, your music. You can do it if you're musically inclined, you've got sheet music, or you've got the piano roll. Do any of you remember the old style pianos? You had a big roll of paper, and you'd, you'd, you had a little pump, or it was electrical, and the piano would roll through, and there are these little, little metal fingers that would uh, pop in and out as the holes in the sheet would roll by, and that would tell the piano keys what to play. And you could have the piano play whatever music you wanted, and you'd buy this song or that song, and you'd stick it in the piano set, and you had yourself a piano roll. I like the piano roll because it looks to me, or feels to me, a little bit more digital. Uh, because I've had very little musical training, when I look at these notes, uh, they don't make as much sense to me. I mean, I understand that they represent a particular tone, but uh, the piano roll is better. Now, in the editor down here, there are a number of different things that I can do. Uh, I've got these little changes that I can make, and uh, I've got a um, uh, number of things. But the, the most important thing to, to know is that I can move these notes around by clicking on this. So now when I play it, well that's sounding pretty nice. And I really like it. And uh, the important thing to do is I can move this anywhere I like. I can move that there. Now, if I switch to the score, the sheet music, I can take this note right here, and I can move that anywhere, anywhere I want. And uh, it'll change for me, and it'll do different things. But I can take any note, and I can put it down there. And if I didn't like that, uh, the nice thing about uh, Max is I hit Command Z, and it moves it back to where it was, and I move that other one back to where it was. Or if I have the piano roll, I can do the same thing. So, so uh, depending on how you're so inclined, you can go into your editor and you can change your notes. You can extend the time that the note hears because, as you can tell, this one lasts for this period of time as the playhead goes through, and this one is shorter and this one is longer. So uh, I've got that. The other, uh, the other thing is, is I can take this note, and let's say it's over here, and I've moved it kind of uh, off, off the timing, and I've got this little time quantizer, and uh, when I've added notes and the timing isn't really good, I can click on one of these and tell the notes to get in line, to have their timing. These little grid marks are places where the note is divided. Um, up here you'll see 
uh, this little thing, 4-4 timing. 4-4 timing is kind of standard Western music. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four timing is a little different. Two, four timing, uh, uh, it's, it's just a measure of beats per second. And it goes like that. So you can go up in here and make changes. But I'll, if I have time, I'll get into this little setup here. <clears throat> so you can, uh, if your notes that you've created the timing of them is not good, or you're not happy with them, you can uh, highlight these two and you can have it uh, uh, go as far as 1 32nd. And they don't move because they're, they're in time. Um, velocity is another attribute of music, and velocity is uh, essentially the loudness of the music. And we take this one, and if I take this particular note that I have highlighted, and I take the velocity down when I hit it again, it's not nearly as loud. Or, wait, let's change that. So it changes the, the loudness of it and how it sounds. Okay, okay. So we've got our musical typing. Uh, I like the keyboard a lot better, and I can do different things. And so I've got these notes here, and I'm very happy with them, but I want to add more. So what I'm going to do, uh, just like in a Word document, you can copy and paste and cut and uh, uh, d treat these like little little words. and or phrases as uh, one of the terms of music. So what I'll do is I'll highlight these two and, <clears throat> and uh, I hit Command C and then Command V and those two notes have been copied and pasted right where the playhead started. If I move the playhead over there and I hit paste, they end up over there. So this way I can extend my music without having to record more music. I can just uh, record uh, one or two notes and then copy and paste and copy and paste. And if I don't like where these two notes are, uh, I can highlight both of them and move them. There we go. I can move them over like that. And I can take these and move that over. And then the nice little thing that I can do is I can move to the front end of the note and I can extend it or retract it and have it start and end right where I want. And I'm going to move this one. There, I'll do that. Let's see how this sounds. I have no idea how it's going to sound. Oh, notice how it stopped before it went to the end? My little cycler uh, cut it off. So what I'll do is I'll extend the, re the cycler and we can play through it again. Well, that was kind of nice. The thing is, is uh, you'll notice this line here that is one beat and this is another beat and this is another beat and uh, I want the music to begin and end on a beat, so I'll move this whole set over. And GarageBand does a nice little thing that you can turn off and on, it's called snapping. And in, if you've done any kind of editing with uh, uh, any audio or any video, uh, snapping is where when you're moving, you're shifting a piece of media around and you have certain time lines that you want it to be or you want it to connect to other pieces of music, the program automatically shifts your media that you're holding right up close to some object or line or something. And so GarageBand does this. And this way, I can keep my timing 
uh, uh, a little more strict and I can uh, be more precise about the timing of my music. So, so I, like, I like this. Okay. I think I covered everything. Editing, timelines. Um, okay. Next. Recording music, looping cycle range. I kind of covered that already. Piano roll versus score interfaces. Yeah, I kind of covered that already too, didn't I? Well, why don't we uh, go straight to recording music and uh, the kind of uh, essential thing. So, so I want to record more music and uh, uh, the best way to go about doing that, there's two different ways you can do that. You can go up here and you can go to track. This, these are tracks right here, and I can add a new track, or I can click this little plus right here, and by clicking on it, it uh, gives me several options, and this is where the versatility of GarageBand comes in. This is a software instrument or virtual instrument. This is a recording device, and when I click on that, it's asking me where do you want me to record from? Uh, a microphone or a, a USB device or something and asked me about that. This one is recording from a machine, uh, an amp, something that is a powered signal uh, and by telling the program you're having running uh, something like that, it will uh, adapt itself to that. This is something completely different. This is a robot drummer. <laughs> And I will add this. This will be the third component to the music, is, uh, this robot drummer. And this is a new thing for uh, um, GarageBand. GarageBand, originally, the, the drumming that you got from it um, was a number of virtual instruments that you would literally uh, add drum beats yourself. You would you would record some and then you'd move them around and you and I'll show you that uh, in a little bit uh, but you had to create your own drum beats or you had to go into the loop menu and find a drum beat menu a, a drum beat that looped for you you couldn't make your own this uh, robot drummer uh, is very very different and uh, it's uh, there's a great deal of variability to it uh, but we'll get to that in a second, and it can be a lot of fun, and um, uh, it can be really useful. So I click on that, and the default instrument that it gives me is a, uh, a electric piano, which uh, I don't have anything in the timeline here. Now, I could add music uh, one of two ways. I could take this and highlight it, then highlight this instrument. Well, I'd highlight this, and I would select copy, and then I would take this, I would select copy, and then click on this, move the playhead to where I wanted uh, the set of copied music to land, and then it would paste exactly the identical thing down on this instrument, and you could have both instruments play. So just for fun, we'll do that, and I'll put that in there. And so when we play the music, so we get both playing. So uh, let's say I decide I want something else. I want something orchestral, uh, some kind of woodwinds. How about, how about a clarinet? or something maybe a little more interesting, a saxophone. So that sounds pretty interesting. Um, or you can have uh, synthetic voices. And uh, let's uh, female chamber choir. So we can hear them both together, 
And this is where the mute and the solo uh, function come in. If I just want to hear this one, the lower one down here, I can select this and this silences the upper one and you can just, you can just hear that or I can select this one and uh, it isolates this particular instrument and that's, that's all that I hear. So uh, if I have a whole string of them, I can uh, listen to one, in, one instrument or not. Uh, however, uh, I don't want the same sound, I don't want the same things as nice as that sounds. Uh, I don't want that, at least not right now. Uh, but I do want to record something else, some other sort of note, something different. I want to harmonize or something. So the idea is I select the particular instrument that I want and uh, I'm going to go with some strings in this one and a string ensemble. And uh, I can either collect, I can either click on this little record device or I can hit R on the keyboard, either one. But we'll do this. So I hit this and then, and I hit some random notes and they magically appear on the timeline down here and they also appear in the editor. And you'll notice, depending on which one I click on, gives me uh, my selection choices. So I've got these notes here and I've got a tiny piece of a note that I don't want. So I select that little piece and I hit delete and it goes away and I select this little piece and that goes away. And also I want, so I'll move that there and I'll move that there. Oops. And notice how these notes don't come to align fully, and this is where our little our little um, note adjuster can go. And so I'll go to one sixteenth, and you'll notice they will they will change. They'll move right up to the edge. And uh, the other thing you can do by highlighting all three of them. I can move all three and have them go more or less uh, as long as I want. And so I'll do that and do that. So now we'll play it. Well, that sounds goofy, doesn't it? Well, that sounded interesting. So, so what I can do is I can make all kinds of adjustments in my little piano roll and I've successfully recorded something and uh, what will happen, someone who's uh, more musically inclined to me than me that has had some training, uh, what they can do is they can play the music through, they hit the record button and then they turn on their musical typing and they start typing away and making their own music and time to the music and they can uh, literally play music like a piano on the keyboard as opposed to plugging a keyboard in. So uh, they have that option. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So I think we got that there. So uh, let's go up over here. Okay, instrument audio adjustments. Um, muting and solo, I talked about that. Volume, I discussed that a little bit. And adjusting uh, the timeline. So I'll go into a little bit more detail here and uh, show you some more stuff. Um, <clears throat> so there are a number of different things that you can do with the music that you have. And you see this little, this little, uh, um, uh, 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 this is a playhead thing. This is what turns the snapping 
on and off. And I can go in between, uh, in between little note divisions uh, kind of randomly, but I like it being on because it just makes it easier. Or you can turn on this little uh, adjustment um, button. And this gives me a huge range of different things that I can do with a note. Let's say, well, let's go with this one. Uh, what I can do is I've got this little drop down and I've got a whole pile of different adjustments that I can make. Uh, right now it's at volume. So we've got the volume and uh, by clicking uh, here uh, or there, uh, I turn on the volume level. This is a particular volume uh, across the timeline. And by clicking on uh, the little line, I can make little dots and I can click on this and I can drop the volume down selectively. And then I click on this and I can change the volume. And so if we, uh, oops, if we solo this, so what I can do in each individual track, I can affect the volume uh, as it plays through. And so if I want some notes to be quieter and some notes to be louder, I can make those adjustments. And then if I want echo, okay, I turn on the echo and then I click in here. Uh, I create a little dot right there and one there and one there. And let's say I want super echo <laughs> right there. I want the super echo. So now we play that through. So what I'll do is I'll adjust this so you can hear the echo a little bit more, have it play through. So what I can do is I can create individual echoes for particular notes. And uh, what I'll do is I'll bring that down to zero again. And the nice thing is you can move those little pen points wherever you like. And uh, so you can make adjustments with echo, with pan. You can make the music shift from left to right. You can make the music, uh, you can add reverb or echo. You can uh, make it high or low, or you can create decay, which makes the sound of the music fall off, or you can add the attack, which is an intense sound of the note to start with, and then it falls off. You can do all kinds of fun, fun things. But for now, we'll just do the volume. And so to turn that off, if I'm all done doing my particular effects in here, I can just turn that off, and then I have the straight up notes and I can go back to being simple. So the idea is that you create a bunch of notes, you kind of position them in an area that you like and how, how you like them sounding, and then you can make uh, little adjustments later, uh, later on. Um, uh, what else do I want to show you here? Uh, what other adjustments? Um, uh, what have I got? I just want to make sure I cover all the things that I uh, discuss. Uh, so we've got the mute and the solo. You've seen how that worked. We've, there are different kinds of volume. You can change the general volume overall with that little slidey button. Or you can go hardcore and in, uh, increase the volume for some notes and decrease it with others and uh, adjusting your timelines. And that's either extending it or uh, 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 changing it in some way or another. Okay, uh, we've covered this already, haven't we? Note adjustments in the piano over and other orchestral maneuvers. So I'm going to show you a few more things. And we'll go back to GarageBand. I'm gonna show you a few more things here. Um, I can take this and I can move this over here. And so when the music is playing, I only hear this part. And as it plays through, as 
So we have that, uh, we can have that play through. So I can move this around. Uh, I can have even more fun and move this up here. And now I don't have any strings at all and all of my music is this particular note. So the important thing to remember is that you can move these around and you can move this down here and you can have a lot of fun like that. Uh, one of the thing that I can do uh, that's kind of cool, I can go up here and I've highlighted these notes, so I hit Command Copy, and then I can go down in here, and I move the playhead over here, and I hit Paste, and it says, wait, you can't do that. So what did I do? So click here, put the playhead there, and let's try that again. So why won't it let me do that? Okay, let's try this once again. So highlight that, copy, go down here, put the playhead over here, and hit paste. There, it let me do it. Um, the previous copy was a whole big piece of music, and so it didn't like that. But now I've got this other music that's going to be in, the, in this particular instrument. Um, uh, okay, while we have some time, uh, let's, uh, let's jump right ahead and go here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Adding new instruments, natural and synthetic, echo and reverb. Okay, I really like echo and reverb, and we've kind of discussed that already. Um, let's go there. Effects. Yeah, this is the fun part. We're going to have uh, fun now. <laughs> uh, let's see. So one of the nice things about having a computer program uh, do music is that you can have, you can add all kinds of effects. As you've seen, we can turn on our little uh, button here and I can add echo and reverb and decay and I can make different adjustments that way uh, but I want to add effects. So we go here and uh, what I'll do is I will uh, mute that and we'll go to this one and I want to add effects to this music of, of one kind or another. Now, the old version of GarageBand, and some people that have an older Mac that haven't updated the GarageBand, the effects suite are going to be completely different. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the company that made this, they made some interesting changes. And uh, we've got the arpeggiator. So I've got this music right here, and I want to add some effects. And so we go up here, this little button right uh, over here in the upper left, that, see the little scissors? That represents editing, cutting, pasting, clipping, doing all kinds of stuff. Um, and we go here. Actually, before I do that, let me show you a thing. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is pretty important, and it's a shortcut key. There isn't, uh, there's one, there's a thing you can do in the upper uh, drop down list and do this to a note. Uh, this is a thing that you can do to a whole uh, instrument piece of music. Uh, and I'll show you. And it's a shortcut key. I'll go right here. And you hit Command T. And what that do does is that cuts. That makes a, a cut that splits whatever your music is. So now, I have two different pieces of music here. And so in a way you can chop up your music and put, move things around and change things uh, without having to re-record or copy or paste. Uh, I can do that individually with notes right here. If I highlight this one and I hit Command T, I cut that note in half. And so now when I go here, I move back, when this plays, and uh, by double clicking in the, the timeline area down here, I 
So uh, that was right at the end. So let me move this up over so it doesn't stop so soon. So we got this. And I will move them over here. There we go. So I've got a nice little double note going on, a little nice little chord. And so what you can do is you can make a long note and cut it into little pieces and then move those little pieces around and make more notes or make harmonic chords uh, or whatever you like. You can, you can do that. So that's a nice little thing to be able to do, to be able to chop up uh, your, your score uh, in ways that are more useful to you. Okay, so let's jump right into effects. We go over here, you see this little dial knob right there? And I click on that, and now uh, I've got a whole set of different things that I can do. So what I'll do is I will move my cycler over here so I won't cycle, uh, so I'll cycle this through quicker. And as I play, I'm going to make adjustments. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what I can do, so what I've done is I've added a chord. It, add, it adds extra notes to this. I can turn that off. I can move this. So it adds vibrato. So I can change that. I can add chorus. And I can add reverb. So I can make these little adjustments and they sound very nice. I'm getting a nice piece of music. And uh, even more interesting, you've got this tiny little, little thing right here. It's called the arpeggiator. And I turn that on and what that does is that add extra notes. And so you're, you're, you'll, instead of playing a chord of three or four notes, it'll go And I've got a number of selections and I can change this. And it changes things up. Why don't I turn this on? Turn that off, and uh, for each instrument, there is a separate, different set of adjustments that I can make. There we go. There's our RPG eater. So we get a bunch of different things that we can do, and every single, every single one of them is different. And so you have to, you have to kind of experiment. And by turning this off, then I go back to my regular notes that I have right here. So uh, I can do that. Now, if I go back here and I take my strings, there is a, an instrument called an arpeggiator, and it gives me a whole bunch of choices about what kind of instrument uh, I'm making. So I made some changes to this particular set of instruments and GarageBand is saying, do you want to save it? And I'm like, nope. So I get something completely different and I've got my, my uh, uh, effects generator on. And I can change that. So, so I can make all kinds of changes. Okay, I've got to wrap things up here pretty quick. Uh, there's just a couple more things that I wanted to show you. I'll go back to the editor and the drum. So we're going to add one final instrument, the drum kit. And it gives me a drum. So I have a whole selection of different drummers that I can have, and I can mix up the kind of music that plays. And then it changes. 
so I can change it. I can add more toms, I can add cymbals, I can add a shaker, I can adjust the amount of cymbals that play, I can make it louder or quieter, I can make it simpler or lighter, and when I've got this on, I can change which drum kit is being used. And you'll notice that as I change the drummer, uh, I change the drummer, the whole drum beat changes. And then I decide to change the drum beat up. So I can uh, adjust the drummer, I can adjust the drum beat, I can change the complexity of the drumming and all, all kinds of different stuff. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of variations that you can try as you create music. So let's go last over here. We showed you these things. Um, marching to your own beat, robot drummer styles and kits, and other cogs and wheels. Uh, I will quickly show you the, where the loops are and then show you how to save and export and all kinds of stuff. So, so uh, we just have a few minutes. So, um, Um, so where are we? Um, so I want to save my music. I go up to File, and I can either save. If I save it, it goes into a GarageBand file that lives on the hard drive on the computer, or I can save it as, and by saving as, I can save it as this. I'm calling it Second Saturday. I can save it to the desktop. I can save it to some other file somewhere else or send it to downloads uh, wherever I like, uh, which is fine, but I won't, I'm not going to save it because it's not done. <laughs> not yet. Well, I'll just, actually, yes, I'll, I'll save it as. And I'll save it as that, and I'll save it to the desktop, and I'll save, and I'll replace the one that was on there. Uh, but I want to share this music. So I go up to share and I've got this export. You can send it to your iTunes, you can send it to your media browser, you can send it all kinds of different places, but I want to export this song as uh, an MP4 uh, or an MP3 or an AIFF file or some other thing and that way you can take the song and put it on your thumb drive and take it home and put it in your computer, or you can upload it to YouTube or SoundCloud or some other uh, uh, cloud hosting uh, music file uh, support thing. So I'll send it to the desktop, and then I export it, and it plays through, and then it's done. And then I hide this, and I hide that, and I turn that off, and there it is. Second Saturday, and I play it. Well, that's nice, there we go. Okay, so that is uh, the major points of uh, how to work within GarageBand. There are many, many other attributes uh, that you can fiddle with and do. The whole idea is that you can create your own music. You don't need any major kind of skill or talent or um, musical training of any kind. You can just move notes around where you like and move more notes around and copy and paste and do all kinds of stuff and then add a robot drummer and you've got some nice kick and beats and have a nice little music for your own show. It's, you don't have to worry about copyright and uh, you can use it for whatever or give it to other people for their music and do all kinds of stuff with it. So uh, that's it. I've totally run out of time. Uh, are questions. there- Questions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max. Uh, make sure that the mic is turned on. Do any of you have some questions? I have a question for you. Um, I haven't looked at the outputs on my, my uh, keyboard yet. 
Oh, okay. I haven't I haven't looked at the outputs on my keyboard. I was wondering if I can connect from the headphone jack to the laptop. Uh, yes, by way of a USB cable. You don't have to answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you interested in learning about GarageBand? You want to pass the mic? Um, I was just interested because it was a free class and I wanted to see what how it worked. I have GarageBand on my Mac at home and I got some good ideas from watching you with it. So good. That's been good. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> I want to repeat thank you. This is really good. Uh, can you do MIDI out with this program? Yeah. Thank yeah, you. the idea is that you can have any number of instruments or microphones as inputs into the program and mix it on the fly while it plays. You could have people playing instruments and have GarageBand record the whole thing on different tracks. And, uh, and it will do MIDI out, if you wish. Yeah. Great. Thank you. OK. If that is all, I want to thank you all for attending the class and being on the show. And uh, I recommend that you all explore GarageBand, create your own music, copyright free, and uh, you can make it as long or as short or as complex or as simple as you like. And uh, you have my support. OK. Uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, we will see you all next time. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. We'll teach you how to shoot. We'll teach you how to light. Teach you how to mic and edit right. Each second Saturday, there's a free training from programs on display to focusing and framing. It's the TCTV training show. The TCTV training show. You're watching TCTV. It's the training show. The TCTV training show. Second Saturdays at 12 o'clock in Studio A.